thank you, Mr. President. Um, for the House's benefit, this is the second time that this order has been put before the House. Uh, I understand my colleague uh, John Graham has some similar SO52s which have been previously rejected by the House, so you might want to consider that context. Um, the reason we were given... The Honourable Member would like to move the short form, please. I move the debate be had in short form, President. Thank you. Um, the good. reason we were given... Uh, Mr. Uh, the Honourable Member, I'll put that first. I'll, ah, sorry. I'll, I'll put the motion. Uh, of, the question is the motion of the member. I'll put it. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the reason the previous SA52 was rejected was a, uh, a technical interpretation of the Act which said that the Minister didn't have direct control over sub-entities we were asking for vital information, asbestos registers, health management records, which workers in that industry, in, in the rail sector in particular, rely on in order to be able to tell when they're in environments which is not conducive to their good health. In other words, the place is riddled with asbestos. We need to know where the asbestos is and we need to know what our exposure is and whether or not we're going to be subsequently covered down the track if anything comes of it. So. We had to rephrase the SO52 in order to specify the sub-entities that apparently the Minister does have control over so, so that the SO52 would be accepted. Now, it's clear under the Act that the Minister does have direct control, but we're not going to quibble with that. We've got advice from the clerk to say that the technicality was correct, so we've resubmitted the SO52. Now, just to give the House some background context, the unions in this sector, in particular the ETU, but also the RTB and other unions, have been asking for these things for about two years. And all we get from State Rail and those sub-entities associated with that transport cluster is obfuscation. We haven't got the register. We might have part of it. It's going to take 600 hours worth of resource to provide the registers. Now, these are documents, Mr. President, these are documents which by legislation are required to be president, present so that if I turn up to a site, I can look up a spreadsheet or a register and say that, yes, this site's got asbestos. We do A, B, C to deal with it. Wear protective equipment, get the asbestos removed, stop work, whatever it may be. But they can't even do these basic things because they don't know where the asbestos is because the employer won't tell them. They're required to have the registers by law, and we try, we've tried, the unions tried to do it through GIPA requests, through correspondence with Railcorp and those other entities mentioned in the SA52. Then, Mr. President, through the budgets estimates process back in August, my colleague Peter Primrose asked Howard Collins, the CEO of Railcorp, if he could provide it. And the answer was, yes, we will get those to you forthwith. No answer, no correspondence, no return, other than a couple of scant management plans, which is not what we're after. Those workers deserve to have access to the information so they can make an informed decision on their exposure to this deadly substance. It's basic stuff. OK, so we've gone through the union corresponding with the employer, GIPA requests, then budget estimates, and now a rejection of an SO52 based on a technicality. So I think it's more than reasonable for this House to now pass this SO52 so that we can get those hold of those asbestos registers and give these employees some comfort over the fact that, number one, they actually exist, number two, they're accurate, so when they're out in their workplaces, they can make an informed decision on how to deal with this, uh, these deadly workplace substances. And people, I mean, in this day and age, with the resource that we have as a modern society, we shouldn't be putting people in situations where they don't have access to this information. And when, when it's asked for through official channels, Mr President, we shouldn't have to come to this House on bended knee for a simple production of documents which are required by legislation. So I ask that the House, uh, I mean, it's been put up for the debate, that's fine, let's have the debate, but please, I appeal to members 
common sense and goodwill and ask that you agree with this proposition because we've been through the proper process. We don't want to have to have unnecessary requests and resource drain on government instrumentalities if we don't have to. But in this case, we've actually been forced down this path. And to be constantly pushed back by bureaucratic delay and excuses is not good enough. And if we have to use the House to extract the information for the benefits of those people in the workplace, we will, we have and will continue to do so. So I ask for your support. Uh, it's a reasonable request and I commend the motion. Thank you. The further speakers, uh, Minister Trudeau. Uh, 